This week on the XJ Talk Show, Josh and I give thanks to those who played along in last week's Amazon You Bought and Want giveaway. And congratulations to our winner, XJ Wheeler, who received a gift certificate and the grand prize, Rugged Ridge Winch Recovery Gear Kit. I tease an upcoming interview with RTR Fabrication. I chat more with Tony about his upcoming trip to SEMA and talk about Jeep potentially ditching the solid axles on the Wrangler platform. All that, and I recap my Halloween haunt installed this year on this week's XJ Talk Show. this program for a special XJ Talk News Break. Scientists discover strange beam from outer space making people think, and there's nothing you can do about it. XJ Talk Show is on the air. Okay, it's a podcast. Oh, you know what I mean. Anyway, here's Tony and Josh. Episode 101. That's one more than 100. Welcome to the show and uh, welcome, Josh. Well, thanks, Tony, and welcome to you too. And welcome to all of our listeners and, of course, members from XJTalk.com, the reason why we're here and doing this sort of thing. Yeah, Josh and I are real Jeep Cherokee, <laughs> real Jeep Cherokee owners with real Jeep Cherokee problems. Yeah. <laughs> you probably know me as Mudderoy on XJTalk.com. And, uh, well, Tony or Mudderoy or just the, uh, the not as cute guy on the XJ talk show. Oh yeah. And you can know, you know, me as uh, NW 99 XJ or Northwest 99 XJ on XJ talk.com. And, uh, you can find me as Josh as well, which is what I go by. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we recently, I'm going to ask someone with Josh on the, uh, on the spot again, Josh, have you seen our new, uh, show logo? No, I haven't. I knew that we were, had something in the works, but I didn't see anything. Yep, yep. It's a uh, it's a, a a better a better done picture, I believe. And uh, you need to catch it. Of course, you can see it on uh, YouTube. You can see it on uh, our Facebook channel, uh, Google Plus, every place we are, even Twitter. So if you guys aren't watching there, you're you're missing out on little. Uh, little tidbits little uh, posts that come up on xjtalk.com also two notifications whenever the uh, xj talk show is going to be on which uh, actually is every sunday night 10 p.m central time and uh, the time changed i wonder how, how many people we lost because they think it is a the show should have been on an hour ago you know i was i was worried i actually had to do a little bit of research i didn't know if uh if daylight savings time affected where you're at so i you know i I thought it was sort of uh, specific to certain time zones, but I could be mistaken. Yeah, uh, I, if if recollection is correct, it's uh, Arizona that uh, is the only sane state that ignores it completely. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we have all these farms and stuff that we have to have these kids getting up and uh, you know in time to <clears throat> milk the chickens and uh, pluck the eggs so they can uh, go to school or something. I don't know, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So what well, the hell is yeah, going to, on? Well, I wanted to give thanks to those who played along in last week's Amazon.com You Bought and What segment and uh, give a big congrats to our winner. Uh, was it Jake yes. uh, who won the winner of our grand prize giveaway of the Rugged Ridge Winch Recovery Gear Kit? Uh, that was uh, a lot of fun. And, of course, we enjoyed uh, having everybody who, who tried calling in, didn't win. Uh, of course, we'll probably be doing something again here in the, in the near future. Yep, uh, yep. But uh, yep. it was a great show and glad to have everybody on board. Yep, and uh, Jake will be getting you that uh, shipping information just as soon as we get it, so uh, you'll know when you're going to get it. Yeah, very good. No, I definitely uh, I'll be looking forward to episode uh, 200 or even 250 if we make it that far. Boy, that's a long ways away. I think. Seems like it. Um, that's a couple of years, isn't it? I mean, for 200 to be uh, a couple of years. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So uh, well, I mean, no, was, yeah, that's right. Because uh, 52 weeks would be 100 and, uh, 104. Yeah, it'll probably be two and a half years with a couple of vacations in there and such, but <laughs> yeah. So the next vacation do we that we take, do we uh do we do the thing like we're leaving playing happy trails to you and waving, you know, and you know, really play it up or is that gonna be calling wolf too many times? Well, maybe that's just a, a tradition that we do and, and uh we, we make it seem like that every single year and, and those the, the veteran <laughs> listeners that's will right. get it and everybody else will freak out, so <laughs> <laughs> Of course, we're assuming they'll freak out, and some of them won't go. It's about damn time. How how could these people last this long? (laughs) 
So yeah, anyway. no, it's it's on on the home stretch. I guess you could say uh, we're into triple digit shows now. So I think that's uh, I think that's just awesome, and and uh, we're glad to have you guys going on. And and of course, we'll be introducing new stuff to the show as as the weeks and months go on. And and uh, we are of course going to stick with all of our favorites and stuff. So uh, glad you guys are here, and, and glad you guys came along for the ride. Yep, yep. So getting ready to go to SEMA, and uh, when I say getting ready to, I mean I'm going, not Josh. Yeah, no, I'm jealous. I'm gonna have to live vicariously through uh emails and and twitter updates and and all that sort of stuff and uh of course i'll be looking forward to the the full report to you know and when you get back and we do the next show yeah and interestingly enough i'm i'm changing jobs at the same time that i'm uh doing this uh, zima thing uh i said zima like the drink yeah. when i'm doing this <laughs> zima that. thing and uh it's uh, it's kind of an interesting deal where uh I'm uh, I'm actually going on this uh, this week long trip uh, in between uh, my uh, last job of five years and my my new job, which will be uh, hopefully five years or even longer. So um, I'll, I'll be going to uh, SEMA this week along with my uh, lovely wife, and uh, we'll be up there uh, through Saturday. Uh, of course, uh, SEMA won't be on Saturday. SEMA ends on Friday, and uh, but uh, looking forward to that. Not really looking forward to the the three hour plane trip up there and the packing and doing all the stuff, you know, that you don't really feel like doing. Uh, I guess there's a certain amount of excitement that goes along with that. Uh, we're not big travelers. Uh, the last time we went anywhere was, uh, Vegas and that's when we got married about 20 years ago. So, uh, we've, we've gone places by vehicle, uh, you know, around visiting people, not really stayed overnight any place. Uh, it's always nice having home and having the, uh, the home bed and the home pillows. So, yeah, uh, no. and you know, so, not so much looking forward to that, but it'll be it'll be nice getting out and doing things. And uh, I have traveled quite a bit for uh, for work over the years, uh, but it never was that much fun uh, for very long because I was always by myself. So, oh uh, well, you're going to be surrounded by, I imagine, uh, several hundred thousand people or something like that at the SEMA show. I mean, it's a big deal, and I think you're going to have uh, an absolute blast. Oh, I think it'll be a lot of fun. Now, I mean, uh, uh, there's always been people where I've been, but I don't know them. It's, it's not mm-hmm. the same as having a, a buddy with you, a friend, uh, a wife that you can look at things and make fun of people and, uh, eat to excess and, you know. So have you had a chance to look at the, uh, the sort of the, the, the site or the show map of sort of how everything's going to be laid out and maybe plan where you're going to go or anything like that? Well, I figure if I've got uh, Tuesday through Friday, uh, plan don't really make any, makes, doesn't make much difference. I'll have plenty of time to see everything. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's right. <laughs> Now, yeah. uh, now Matt and I, Matt actually, uh, spoke with me about this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he and his wife were looking at doing some, uh, off road, uh, and I may have mentioned this before, some, uh, some off road fun in those, uh, side by side, uh, I call them golf carts, but they, yeah, have, right. uh, they have 110 horsepower. So yeah. apparently they'll, they'll move, uh, move along the, uh, the desert pretty well. So I think we're going to be going and doing that, uh, on Thursday. So that'll well, be uh, something yeah. interesting to do. No, absolutely. Yeah, I just uh, I wish I could spend a couple of days in the in the, uh, in the big hall where all the exhibits and the shows are and stuff like that. I uh, I guess there's it's going to be completely different than than years prior. Uh, they're uh, they brought in some sort of specific designer who's a who's a big hot rod uh, hot rod designer guy of some sorts, and and his artwork is going to be all over the place. And I guess uh, the moment you walk in, uh, you're going to notice a difference. Had you had you know seen other shows prior. Uh, other SEMA shows prior, uh, this one's going to be, I guess, extra special and completely brand new. Yeah, interesting. No, I really haven't read anything about it uh, with all the stuff that's been going on uh, with the job and uh, other things in life. I haven't spent much time uh, doing any any research. I mean, I figured it was like all I need to do is be able to get to the airport and get to the hotel and then get to the uh, where the show is and the rest of it will uh, work itself out. Well, give you put this in perspective, Tony. SEMA or uh, the special? Uh, oh, geez, now I forgot. Uh, I forgot what it stood for. Uh, the special. Oh, I, I forgot. Anyways, special the SEMA equipment. Show. <clears throat> Let's see. What is it? And manufacturers. Association. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, I, I read it earlier today because I was uh, looking some stuff up for uh, a website that I was doing. Well, I always can uh, get uh, SEMA and CES confused. Uh, you know, Consumer Electronics Show, which is. One that I, another one I've also wanted to, to go to for uh, for a long time, but yeah. 135,000 industry leaders. So you imagine a very good portion of that are actually going to have booths. 135,000 industry leaders 
uh, and from more than a hundred countries are going to be there. And that's not including the other, you know, guests and, and celebrities and all this other stuff that ends up showing up. Yeah. That's yeah, a big deal. I agree with you about CES. That's another one I'd like to see. Uh, I've missed that one over the years. And, uh, so, uh, you know, first things first, I'll, uh, I'll do the one that has, uh, does, uh, does the vehicles and then, uh, maybe we can still, uh, figure a way to do the, uh, CES in the future. It's around the same time yeah. of year, isn't it? I mean, uh, like the first part of like 2014 February. or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like the second, it's usually in February, I think it's around there. Cause, uh, usually March is when they release all the, all the new stuff, which is, you know, what you'd seen the month prior at, C- at CES. See, I almost did it there. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think that uh, <clears throat> I don't know if uh, Zima is still in existence or not, but if it if it was if I was the manufacturer of Zima, I would look at promoting uh, being the the main sponsor at Zima, so you could say and uh, <laughs> Zima brought to you by Zima. It would just be oh, really yeah. it just be really, really confusing. <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about Jeeps. Um, I think I mentioned maybe I didn't uh, last show about the uh, the ninety nine having some death wobble. Yeah. And uh, I went out. I'm sorry? I was going to say, what's going on with that? Did you uh, track anything down? Well, uh, I uh, I moved the the track bar off of the 98 onto the 99. I had the uh, Rough Country Heavy Duty uh, track bar, which was a replacement. That's the one that has the bracket uh, that goes onto the unibody, uh, which was a replacement because I bent the original one, (laughs) which is not a good sign, which means... Which means that's kind of the one I want to get off there before I take it off road again and, and bend it. Uh, and interestingly enough, Matt bent his as well. Also a rough country uh, track bar. Very interesting. I wonder if uh, if they're prone to that now. That's uh, I mean, two two people have the same issue. Did it bend in the same place? Do you know? I don't know. Uh, I don't know that he took a picture of it. Um, but uh, he got a replacement, and uh, what he did was he went with uh, Iron Man for. Uh, Iron Man 4x4 Fab.com, uh, Andy Iron Man, Iron Man Andy's uh, uh, what he calls Extreme Duty uh, mm-hmm. track bar, which is uh, notably larger in diameter uh, than what the, the one is uh, from Rough Country. Uh, anyway, he went with that one <clears throat> and uh, p- took his off, and then uh, Jim Brass Cats, uh, mm. he, he actually uh, put that on his, uh, his Jeep. So that's what I, I did with uh, with mine. I got one of Iron Man Andy's uh, Extreme Duty track bars and uh, put that on my 98 and then uh, took the uh, the one off of uh, the RC that I'd just taken off of the 98 and put it on the 99 and uh, went out and, and did a test drive and uh, nope, death wobble. You could feel it starting to come on and uh, slowed down a little bit and uh, continued on. Now, of course, this was after looking up underneath the, uh, uh, under the Jeep having somebody do the steering wheel back and forth and seeing that the pitman arm that was attached to the, um, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the tie rod end that was attached to the pitman arm was, uh, was moving a little bit. And, uh, so was the, um, the tie rod end that is attached to the, uh, factory bracket at the unibody. Mm-hmm. So I figured it was probably <clears throat> pretty plainly, uh, those two, uh, tie rod ends. So, uh, I really didn't want to go with another uh, factory track bar on there, although that would have been fine, but it looked like an opportunity to upgrade on the 98 and uh, certainly have an upgrade for the, for the 99. Yeah. So I uh, did all that, but the, the, the death wobble uh, continued. So pl- placed an order from uh, Amazon for some uh, more tie rod ends. I already had a drag link, a Moog drag link that I didn't install. I didn't really uh, see the point, uh, especially – I don't like the idea of taking those tie rod ends that are attached to the thing off just to have to redo it again. So, um, once the, uh, the two tie rod ends came in, I put in the, uh, the drag link and, uh, is that, let me make sure I'm understanding this right. Cause I think I get a little confused on the parts. The, okay. The piece that I call the drag link is the one where the tie rod end that attaches to the passenger side knuckle. And goes up to the pitman arm. Yes, that would be the drag link. Yeah, okay. if it's connected to the pitman arm. That's uh, what actually turns essentially the, the 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 knuckle, and then 
the tie rod, uh, which is connected from about the midway point of that, goes to the other knuckle. Yes. Okay. So uh, I put in the, uh, the the Moog drag link and then uh, also ordered a uh, steering stabilizer uh, just because that other one that was on there had, you know, 150, 160,000 miles on it and uh, replaced it. And thankfully, it was a little larger in diameter. So uh, it's, uh, you know, with the 30-inch tires on there, uh, a, a little bit more uh, in the shock department, in the uh, steering mm-hmm. stabilizer department, will be would be welcome. So uh, I have yet to, to test drive it, uh, but my daughters have been driving it, and uh, I know that uh, my older daughter got really scared with the death wobble on on the interstate. So she has not, as far as I know, uh, taken it back on the interstate. I cautioned them to just you know see how it feels, and then. Uh, you know, once you feel confident that it's not going to be an issue, then, uh, you know, take it back on the highway. Mm-hmm. So it, it appears to be fixed. I, I'll probably take it for a test drive. It's gone so much because they both work. They both have uh, after school jobs. They both attend college. So they're gone just a lot. So uh, if unless I want to, uh, you know, work on the Jeep for a couple hours and then go in and get all cleaned up uh, and then go back out and test drive it. Uh, man, it's usually gone by then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, maybe I'll get a chance to test drive it tomorrow, and I'll I'll take it up to speed and uh, abuse it to see if it's going to do it. Because I don't like death wobble, but I know it's not going to kill you. Oh yeah, no nobody nobody likes death wobble. And uh, geez, I know we could probably spend an entire show going over all the things over about death wobble, and of course, you know, tips on how to fix it and and everything else like that. And uh, maybe we'll do that one of these days for this show. We, we got some other stuff in store for you guys. Uh, but if you'd uh, like some tips, if you're experiencing death wobble and there's, uh, you're looking for some ideas on how to fix it, well, you head over to xjtalk.com and, uh, and just peruse through the threads. I'm sure, just an easy search function, and boy, uh, you're going to find a lot of really good information on xjtalk.com about death wobble. Yeah, and if you'd like to hear somebody talk about it, you can go to the xjtalkshow.com and do a search for death wobble. I know that we have a, a couple of interviews. I know Iron mm-hmm. Man Andy, uh, I think that was... Uh, episode 69 or 70 that uh, he spoke about death wobble and i know steve 4.3 lxj has uh, also uh, spoken about about death wobble so but yeah we will cover it again in the future because it's something that comes up and and not everybody's going to go back and look in the past episodes uh, for the information no absolutely all ton, all kinds of good information there on the site and uh, well, of course we're adding stuff all the time so have you have you been given any love to your xj have you even seen it are you just <laughs> yeah. are you just now a honda person exclusively well, no, unfortunately i have to do the walk of shame every morning down the driveway <laughs> with it staring at me <laughs> i'm sorry i'll drive you soon we'll get on the trail soon you'll see dirt soon trust me uh, no, it's, uh, I actually drove it just the other day. In fact, um, uh, I had an interview. Uh, well, let me take it back just a little bit. Uh, I, uh, for those who are following, following my build thread, uh, you know, I've got an aftermarket of sorts rear bumper uh, on the back of it. I, uh, it was shortly after I actually bought the Jeep that I, you know, perused through Craigslist as I often do and, uh, and found a local fabricator who was building, uh, off-road bumpers. And I happened to have a little bit extra money left over after the sale of the Jeep or after the, uh, the purchase of the Jeep. So I, uh, I called him up and knowing that I, I really wanted to do bumpers fairly soon on it, uh, the front obviously got, uh, got pushed back quite a ways, but the rear bumper, um, uh, you know, he asked me what I was looking for and I was like, well, kind of like exactly what you have posted up here, but I would, uh, you know, I'd like something sort of styled after the stage two JCR bumper. And he's like, oh yeah, I can do that. And we, you know, quabbled about a price for a little bit. And then, uh, uh, he ended up, uh, build me exactly what I wanted. Uh, everything was, was just great. I didn't get a chance to put it on right away. So I sat on it for a few months or so. Uh, when I went to go put it on, I found out that, uh, well, the jig was off, uh, when he made it and it sat about three sixteenths of an inch too tall. Uh, so it wouldn't let the gate, the rear gate and the rear hatch close. Oh, no. So yeah, it's uh, so I was like, Oh geez, you know, I'm really looking forward to putting this on and now I can't. So it was like a year later before I, you know, I finally got sick of just looking at it in the garage or whatever and, and, uh, decided to, all right, I'm just gonna have to modify this thing to get it to fit right. Now, in the meantime, uh, you know, I had texted the guy, tried calling him, left voicemails, emailed him, uh, virtually every form of contact I could think of to get a hold of him. And we, there was a couple of times where we played some phone tag, uh, and eventually he just sort of dropped off the face of the earth. And uh, and I, I was never given the chance to get this thing taken care of. 
Uh, so yeah, I never really bad mouthed him or anything like that. Uh, you know, I think I had posted up uh, something along the lines of where I, you know, I kind of thought it was a shady deal, whatever. Uh, but nonetheless, I, you know, ovaled out some holes and I got it mounted up on the Jeep. I wouldn't trust it as a recovery point, uh, which is why, you know, I got a you know, class three, uh, trailer hitch in the back there and it's all anchored in with the JCR nut strips. So, uh, long story short, a couple of years, uh, went by and, and I just, I'm on Jeep forum a lot as well. And he posted up that, uh, uh, Hey, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm back. Um, I ran into some trouble. I know I've wronged some people in the past and I'd like to make it right. And, and he went on and on and on um, about, you know, sort of what had happened and everything and, and really being sincere about wanting to make right the people who he'd wronged in the past. And, and you know, you know who you are. If you, if you know these people, uh, have them get a hold of me. And he listed out a bunch of contact information. So I know he was genuine. So I, um, I shot him a private message and I also shot him an email. Told him, you know, I was like, hey, you know, this is who I am. Uh, this is where we met when I bought the bumper. You may remember this. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, I remember you. <laughs> and so... Uh, uh, ended up uh, actually heading up there with the Jeep uh, to his uh, his new shop that he's got out in the uh, East County of Vancouver, Washington, and uh, and did a little interview with him. And it was really cool because he's got a very, very interesting story to tell. Uh, his name is Danny Rourke, and he's got a partner uh, named uh, Zach, and they have a little company called RTR Fabrication that they've started up. And uh, they're going to end up taking care of me for um, the way that Danny uh, ended up uh, sort of you know, not doing his part is customer service goes in the past and I'm going to get a whole new rear bumper made. Uh, and it's to my specifications with a few things that, uh, you know, I would have liked to have seen or have done on this bumper had I, you know, had the time and, and means to, to actually modify it. So, uh, which is really cool. I told him, I was like, look, I'm in no rush, a uh, couple few months or a couple few weeks rather, uh, take care of some other things you guys have in the, in, you know, in the coming, uh, with some customers and, uh, you know, we'll, you know, get a new bumper on my rig here in, in you know, about a month or so. And they're both super fine with that. And uh, they're looking forward to actually, um, you know, being supporters of the show and the vendors on xjtalk.com. So we'll be seeing a lot more of RT, uh, RTR fabrication. And you're actually going to hear an interview with them next week. Now, I don't want to say anything bad about these folks. I mean, uh, they're new and, you know, turned over, the guys turned over a new leaf. But are, are you a little concerned based on what happened in the past? And uh, uh, should our I listeners was, be I confirmed? Wasn't. I was initially, um, you know, I sort of went into this with a little trepidation and, uh, uh, after sitting down and talking with him and he's been in, in very regular communication with me ever since. Uh, and, uh, he's been a hundred percent genuine and forthcoming with everything and really, really peeled back the layers of the onion of this story. He got r rather personal, uh, in, in the interview and, and dug, dug pretty deep and, and ordinarily, you know, I don't mind hearing stories of, uh, you know, trials and tribulation and stuff like that. But, um, you know, this guy has really been through the ringer and he's, he's a little bit older now and he realizes sort of, you know, how uh, the ways that he's wronged people in the past and he's definitely turned over a new leaf. Uh, they, they have a, a very decent little facility going on. Uh, it's not just a, you know, little runk, runk, you know, hokey poke garage operation here. They actually have some some serious stuff going on. So, uh, I, I have nothing but the utmost faith in these guys that this time, by this time next year, uh, they're going to have one heck of an operation going on. Well, I'm sure you'll let us know if, uh, things don't work out, uh, the oh, way yes. you're hoping. And, uh, even though, uh, you're not at a, uh, at, at further financial risk, certainly, um, mm -hmm. uh, waiting for another bumper, uh, that can, uh, in itself be maddening if, or, or frustrating if, uh, if that doesn't yeah. turn out. So, like I said, I'm sure you'll be uh, letting us know. We don't want to. We don't want to just uh, put people on to something for uh, the sake of putting them on to something. We we want to make sure that it's a a good deal and up and up, good customer service, and uh, we'll be here to to let you know when we when it's not good customer service. Well, what I'm planning on doing is is trying to get a couple testimonials uh, here in the meantime, and because uh, I know they've got uh, they've got a few people they've done some roof racks for. In fact, one guy uh, they just finished a project uh, for a guy who's got I think it's a Land Cruiser. Uh, I'm I'm not 100 percent sure, but they they did a full set of bumpers, I believe, and a roof rack for him with these uh, what they call limb lines. I guess it's you know like eyelets on both the uh, the roof rack and the bumper where you string a cable from. And as you go through deep brush, the cable is uh, the the brush sort of follows the line of the cable up and around and keeps it off the windshield and keeps it off of your uh, off your windows and stuff. And uh, 
Uh, this guy's planning on driving it from here clear down to South Africa. No, South America, rather. <laughs> yeah, South Africa. Now that exactly. that would be a, that, <laughs> yeah. that would be a story. That'd be a good YouTube video there, right there. Exactly. Yeah. No. So he's got a uh, he's got to pass the uh, pass over the Panama Canal at least. So, uh, but I mean, this guy's driving from you know my area, <laughs> Pacific Northwest, uh, clear down to to South America. So that's going to be uh, it's going to be something else. This is Dan from the 4x4 Podcast, and you're listening to The XJ Talk Show. The XJ Talk Show is now available on iTunes. Subscribe and leave a review. Also, be sure to give us a five-star rating. We welcome and look forward to your questions and comments. Dial 530-675-4102 and leave your message on our 24x7 voicemail. I know you've heard us talk about Amazon on the podcast before, but have you heard about our new game? You bought what? It's a lot of fun, and we want you guys to play along. All you have to do is go to xjtalk.com or xjtalkshow.com and click on the Amazon banner there on the main page. This takes you right to Amazon, where you can buy any crazy little thingamajig to join in on the fun. Amazon gives us a list every week of what you guys are buying, but we don't get to know who it is that's buying it. As an added bonus, you get the same great price you always would, and Amazon is going to give the show a small pittance for you playing along. So let's all have some fun. The XJ Talk Show and Amazon.com. Hey guys, so we want to talk a little bit tonight about uh, some iTunes reviews, and uh, you know it's, we've we've mentioned it in the past uh, that uh, hey, don't forget to give us a five star. Uh, review on iTunes, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But we really haven't put much uh, emphasis on it. And, uh, you know, we've had some good reviews, and I thought uh, it might be a good idea for us to kind of go back and uh, uh, regurgitate uh, some of those past reviews because they're, they, they're very interesting, very creative, a lot of fun. Yeah, no, there's been a couple that have really stood out uh, in my mind, stuff that's really, really, you know, struck home with me, uh, you know, because this this is sort of a – I mean, we've asked you guys for voicemails in the past, and and of course reviews of all kinds are are you know fine and dandy with just a simple star rating, uh, but with a, actually getting a chance to sort of leave a review, uh, leave a message of sorts, uh, you sort of get to get that personal interaction and feedback from those who are actually listening to the show, and it means something to them, uh, and and some of these are just are absolutely great. So uh, I I do believe this is a new one that uh, came in on September 29th, and uh, I just had. Uh, just not in the habit of checking these things. We don't see them that often. So uh, apologies to uh, to the individual that uh, we missed uh, back in uh, in uh, the the end of September. But uh, anyway, uh, this one starts. I don't even own an XJ. Five stars. Uh, and uh, what is that, uh, Josh? R D. Oh, you would have to call me out on that one. I was trying to think of that too. I was squinting at the screen. So I, I'm going to apologize for uh, both myself and Tony trying to. Uh, uh, not butcher this name, but uh, Ardis uh, Roycers. It's almost like our destroyers, but uh, just just Roycers. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, big thanks for that five star review, Tony. What did he have to say about the show? He says, uh, "Guys, at least I think it's a he. Uh, guys, I freaked. Uh, <laughs> sorry, guys, I, I'm reading this ahead, and it's it's pretty funny. Uh, guys, I freaked a while back when I thought you were going off the air." I do own a TJ and subscribe to your web forums. And even though I listen uh, to other subjects via podcast on my phone, you guys are the best. It's like listening to my best friends. I felt an obligation to finally write a review and help even in the smallest way to your show. Keep it going. That's great. I mean, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Uh, You know, we appreciate the feedback. We appreciate the, you know, the help that we've gotten from our outside listeners uh, people send us stuff to the show all the time. It's just, it's absolutely fantastic. And getting the reviews and, and the feedback like that, uh, you know, really, really, you know, makes all this worthwhile. Yeah. It makes it a big, di- makes a big difference in coming here every week and then doing the show. It's a lot of fun, but, uh, I've said it before. Uh, if, uh, if you got a, a can with a string and you think nobody's <laughs> holding, holding the other can, it's not so much fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and as a, as an only child, I know what that's like, Josh. Yeah, well, unfortunately, I can't relate on that level exactly, but uh, but here's a guy who's given us a one-of-a-kind rating, uh, or at least calls our show one-of-a-kind. Five-star review back in August by Boss Man XJ. It says, great show with witty banter, good balance between actual real-world off-road knowledge and analytical engineering perspective. So, I mean, between the two of us, I guess we're giving him everything that he's looking for in a podcast. 
Five star review, Bossman XJ give, saying we're one of a kind. And then uh, this is from July 24th. Uh, thumbs up five stars by Mr. XDM40. Uh, see if you can't pronounce it, just read off all the letters. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm coming back to the off-road world after about 10 years uh, or so, and this show is helping a lot. Uh, but it's a little heavy on the commercials, but still a great show. Yeah, we were doing a lot of the commercials, and I, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to read this one. Um, and I may have mentioned this in the past. I'll just say again, I, I got kind of excited because I found this uh, place that I could go and get these these uh, these voiceovers, these voice drops made for really not much money at all. So I was a little over anxious to play these on the show. It's the, you know, it's like when you get something for your Jeep and you might make the modification oh, yeah. and get it on there. You want to take it out and try it. So uh, I've calmed <laughs> down a little bit since then. Yeah, no, we got a few of those reviews. And even if it's a five-star review, a three-star review, whatever it is, a voicemail giving us constructive criticism, guys, uh, you know, we love to hear it yeah. uh, because that just gives us an, us an opportunity to improve on the show. Uh, adapt things a little bit, switch things up, and, and of course, maybe you know add a little bit of different flavor to it. This is just like uh, uh, having a Jeep and uh, going off-road. We're learning by doing. We don't have uh, a vast uh, back experience of uh, radio or podcasting, so uh, we need your help. Yeah, and uh, we got uh, plenty of help from all of our listeners out there. And of course, I get help almost on a weekly basis uh, with uh, This Week in Jeep segments, uh, but we got another review came in. Uh, this is back in July. Uh, where it calls us the definitive XJ podcast. RJR Rodriguez uh, says, not only is this a great way to pass the time in traffic while sitting in your Jeep Cherokee, but Tony and Josh bring you many great interviews and tips weekly. And that's just what we're you know trying to do, guys. Give you guys some good tips uh, with some of our tech segments. Give you guys a little bit of entertainment as well. Uh, and of course, provide you with some interviews every now and again with uh, industry professionals and other off-road enthusiasts. And we have another one from uh, Joe MN. Great uh, podcast, five stars. This is back from uh, July of, uh, I'm sorry, June 29th. I just picked up my first Jeep this spring and didn't know a lot of what I was getting in, getting myself into. Very <laughs> glad, <laughs> very glad I started listening to the podcast. A lot of great information uh, and put together in an easy listening format. As long as we're not reading, uh, keep up the good work. Yeah, as long as we're not reading it, Josh, it's easy to yeah. listen to. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, that's that's good. I mean, uh, some great feedback from somebody who is a first-time Jeep Cherokee owner. Uh, you know, the site is is full of useful information, xjtalk.com. Uh, for the first-time uh, XJ wrench turner, uh, first-time XJ owner, first-time builder, uh, or even for the veteran guys out there out there who are doing their own fabrication work. Uh, from beginning to end, xjtalk.com is is definitely your premier source for tech information uh, and you know tips and tricks to get, help you guys along the way, uh, regardless of what level of enthusiasm and the plans for your Jeep. Uh, and we got to, we got a review here from a guy. Um, geez, oh boy, I, I, I'm, I'm not even going to try, man. That's that's a lot. Aga I, flaga no no no, it's like ag aga flag ass snurp snurp. I got a flag of snurp. <laughs> Gesundheit. Yeah. Well, he says the XJ Talk Show is awesome. Great podcast full of helpful information. Also, some great comic relief, especially from Nikki G. Yes. Makes me giggle a little like a good, <laughs> makes me giggle like a little girl every time. <laughs> Love the show. Keep it up. And we plan to, believe me. And Nikki G has been a great addition to the show, calling in uh, just with without exception every week, leaving us a, a great voicemail. Uh, of course, there's times where Tony and I get a little long-winded and, and we forget to play or we don't have a chance to play the uh, the, the voicemails that we get. Uh, but Nikki G, nonetheless, sending them in. And they're always just absolute great work. I think we're going to do a best of Nikki G. We're going to have to. <laughs> uh, I think uh, I think we're going to have to put together a little bit of a show reel of sorts and, and give you guys like five minutes of Nikki G or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's our uh, iTunes reviews that we had for this week. And uh, if you uh, if you picked up on it, uh, we get a iTunes review uh, about once a month, maybe maybe twice, but generally about once a month. And uh, I know that we've got uh, a lot more listeners uh, that could write iTunes reviews, and and we'd really appreciate it if you might take a few moments uh, of your time and uh, rate the show and uh, put a little put a little something on there. 
it will uh, it will help the show because when people are looking for things to listen to on iTunes, uh, if they see the number of reviews, they'll go, well, you know, I'm going to give this one this show a chance and and see if it's any good. Yeah, absolutely. And and Tony uh, recently posted up some specs as far as sort of the percentage of our listeners and where they're getting uh, where they're playing the show through or from. And and I was surprised, in fact, that uh, to see just how big of a percentage iTunes uh, listeners comprises of our listening audience. Uh, I think it's great. Uh, I've badmouthed Apple in the past. Honestly, I don't care how you guys listen to the show as long as you're listening and you're telling a friend about it. Uh, and uh, Tony, did you have those numbers? Could you give us a breakdown as far as you know, maybe our top three or top five where people are going to listen to the XJ Talk Show? Yeah, I just want to mention really quick, uh, there's a, a podcast that I listen to and uh, the guy that is uh, that does that podcast is a, a self-professed uh, Apple fanboy, uh, and mm-hmm. uh, he he purposely says things that are anti Windows and uh, pro Apple, and I and and I'm just I'll just I think anybody that has listened to this podcast very often uh, knows I'm not an Apple fan. I don't think yeah. I don't think that they uh, I don't think that they do a bad job. I think they do a good job. I just don't really like. Uh, the idea of uh, people making things or writing software where they do the thinking for you and remove the ability for you to do things the way you might want to do them. Now, with that said, they are making computing uh, and uh, even the, the little gizmos that are little computers, uh, they are making computing a lot easier, a lot more accessible to a very wide audience. And that's, but that's what their success is. And they've also taught other uh, companies like Microsoft uh, that that's important and that's what the, the time and effort needs to go to that so that everybody can can you know enjoy uh, computers in whatever form they are in. So hats off to them. They, they've made a bunch of changes in the industry, but I will always have a problem with them uh, because I like being able to think. I like being able to have options. I like being able to have more than one button that does 27 different things. Yeah, no, I I hear you, Tony. I, I've I've not pulled any punches when it comes to my opinion on Apple uh, or any of the i devices, as it were, yeah. uh, here on the show and 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 other shows. But uh, uh, no, I mean, nonetheless, you know, all of our iTunes and uh, and iPhone, iPad, i device uh, listeners, uh, you guys keep it up. Uh, we it's all just in fun and games. We're sitting here giving you guys a bad time, or or at least giving the manufacturer of your preferred listening devices. Uh, a bad time, but uh, nonetheless, we appreciate you, appreciate you guys listening. Right, and and the, the the direction I was going here, I know it always bothered me whenever I would hear this guy uh, badmouth Microsoft, uh, the the Windows platforms, because that's what I use, that's what I enjoy, uh, that's what I make even make a living at. Uh, but uh, I'm going to try to hold back a little bit on my uh, Apple bashing because I know how I feel when this guy bashes the Windows stuff, the Microsoft stuff. So I'm going to try not to bash the Apple stuff, even though it's a lot of fun. It's almost as much fun as, as bashing the 2014 Jeep Cherokee, Josh. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Uh, at least, at least anything. Apple works, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to give them that, I suppose. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know if there's anything more fun than bashing the 2014 Cherokee. Okay, now the, back to the stats that Josh was asking about. Uh, now, keep in mind, guys, we recently just moved on to Libsyn, which is a, uh, a, a very well-used service in the podcast industry, and, uh, and we only recently did it because I'm cheap. Uh, but uh, the nice thing about it is uh, it gives you really good stats, really interesting stats. So we've only had about uh, four shows uh, that we've uh, uh, published to Libsyn, and uh, so only four shows or four weeks' worth of stats. But looking at these stats are, are very interesting. Um, we have a total of about uh, 600 downloads uh, on those four shows over the last four weeks. And uh, this, this was just amazing to me that I, I guess it makes sense when you think about what I just said about uh, Apple making devices that are easier for people to use. <clears throat> but uh, there's this thing called Apple Core Media which is, uh, I think uh, it has to do with uh, all the little different devices that uh, the iPad, the uh, maybe not so much the iPhone, I guess it could be, but the various Apple devices that, that use whatever uh, the, the core media software that those devices use. Anyway, out of the 600 or so podcast uh, downloads that we've had, 182 has been the Apple core media. 
So that's a substantial, substantial part. That's a, uh, what are the about 25% or 20% of the overall downloads. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely a good, uh, almost a quarter. Yeah. That's, that's impressive. So, uh, I mean, it just goes to show that, uh, even if you're an Apple owner, you can be a next day talk show listener. No, I'm sorry. I was wrong. It's 29.55% looking at the pie chart uh, and pulling up a, uh, a, a second, a not so distant second at 20.45% or 126 downloads is iTunes. So hey. <laughs> you take the Apple core media and the iTunes and put them together and uh, you got well over 300, about almost 350 downloads. So over half of those 600 downloads have been on the Apple uh, related products. Well, that's something else. Uh, you know, here I thought droids were taking over the world, but I guess I was wrong. It's apples. <laughs> well, I think the problem is, is that, um, uh, there's so many different ways you can do things on an Android. Like I use beyond pod, uh, the beyond pod software to download podcasts and listen to them. And it's great. I really enjoy it. Uh, but there's uh, there's many different ways. Um, our, our stitcher uh, slash Android comes in at 26, uh, downloads. And let's see if I can find that one real quick. Uh, that's only 4.2% of the, uh, of the overall downloads. But, uh, Stitcher is a very easy way to listen to the show. Uh, all you have to do is download the Stitcher app and then just do a search for XJ Talk Show, and uh, you can listen to it that way. Um, Beyond Pod takes a little effort because you need to go in and plug in the uh, the feed URL and blah, 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 blah. So that's the other thing. You, you have to ha- have a little knowledge under your belt to, to, to accomplish some of these things where Apple is taking care of it for you. So, you know, God bless Apple and making it easy. Well, absolutely. I mean, it just, uh, you know, gives us, I I suppose, a a larger listening audience, which I know tickles my fancy as well as yours. But uh, nonetheless, I mean, I guess the point here is, is, you know, I I was interested to see the breakdown Uh, just because I'm a, you know, I'm a bit bit of a techie and I like those kind of stats and, and numbers and stuff like that. Uh, but nonetheless, I mean, the bottom line here is we don't care how you're doing it as long as you're doing it, I suppose. So, uh, I don't think I mentioned any of this, but <clears throat> here's some more of these stats before we, uh, uh, get everybody's ears and eyes bleeding from this, uh, just real quick. The, uh, United States, not surprisingly is the top country for downloads at, uh, 90.91%. Uh, we have, uh, Canada in at 6%, uh, the United Kingdom, uh, comes in uh, in fourth place. It's so low, it's not even a percentage. And then, interestingly enough, Indonesia and Turkey. Wow, very interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's only one uh, one download from each one of those. Uh, I think, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped Portugal. Portugal, there was 12 downloads. So Portugal, United Kingdom with four, uh, an unknown with one. That's probably an NSA listening to us. Uh, yeah. Indonesia with one and Turkey with one. So, uh, all over the world, world but uh, predominantly, um, predominantly the U S of course. And, uh, uh, also real quick, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, uh, the U S markets, uh, in radio, uh, they have markets and, and, and de- depending on what market you do well in r- will, uh, help, uh, define how much money you can charge for commercials. So, and that's just a, that's a very loose thing because I didn't really pay that close attention being in IT, uh, even though I, when I worked at Arbitron, uh, the radio rating, radio ratings company, I didn't pay that close attention to it. It wasn't part of my job. But anyway, I was real enthused to see that uh, our top market is the New York market. Oh, very interesting. I wouldn't have thought that. Nope. New York, San Francisco, Washington, D.C., Los Angeles, and then Houston. So those are the markets that we are, are doing the best in. So anyway, uh, fun with stats. This is Brian Myers from JC Offroad, and I just been overhauled. Uh, I mean, you're listening to XJ Talk Show. The XJ Talk Show is now available on iTunes. Subscribe and leave a review. Also, be sure to give us a five-star rating. We welcome and look forward to your questions and comments. Dial 530-675-4102 and leave your message on our 24 by 7 voicemail. 
xjtalk.com. It's where you go when you're not off-road. First Week in G. Well, guys, we've talked a lot about the 2014 Cherokee, and I'm not imagining that's going to stop anytime soon, at least. I'm going to be complaining about it for quite a while, I would imagine. (laughs) Well, the new Jeep Cherokee advertising campaign has officially begun. The uh, ad campaign will be vigorous and saturating. You're going to hear it on radio. You're going to see it on TV. You're probably going to see it on YouTube. You're going to see it in just about every media channel imaginable. Uh, Chrysler Jeep Corporation is, I guess, not holding back on this. Uh, They have recently released an ad that includes a Bob Dylan song to make certain generations feel nostalgic or young again, or at least so they have quoted. And of course, this is somehow going to sway them to buy a 2014 Cherokee. I don't know if that's going to work or not. I think the uh, sales numbers are doomed from the start. Nonetheless, I think they're trying to do everything they possibly can to sell as many of these Cherokees as they can here very soon. Uh, Future ads are also going to include uh, Ben Stiller uh, in a character for an upcoming movie that he's doing. Uh, Sort of following suit with the Dodge Durango campaigns that you may have been seeing recently with Will Ferrell's character, Ron Burgundy. I'm a big fan of Ron Burgundy, and of course, uh, his, uh, those uh, those movies have been uh, really great. And those those uh, those commercials, if you guys haven't seen them, go check them out on YouTube. They're they're really funny. Well, hey, Jeep fans, uh, all of you guys out there, I imagine our Jeep fans. Of course, you are if you're listening to this show. Uh, if you think the idea of a funky looking car based Cherokee ri- revival is offensive, well, of course you do. Have a listen to what might be in store for the next generation Jeep Wrangler. I know right now most of you are cringing. Uh, I know I was when I first read this. Now, due to harsher government fuel economy regulations, Jeep engineers are working rigorously to make sure that the Wrangler meets its new requirements while also keeping its hardcore off-road routes intact. One of the things on the chopping block, ditching the solid axle suspension system and going the direction of, get this, an independent suspension all around. That's right, IFS on a Jeep Wrangler. Now, the next generation Wrangler will go on a serious diet overall, using aluminum body panels and an air suspension system. So the idea of a four-wheel independent suspension setup for the most popular off-road vehicle on the planet isn't all that surprising, especially considering recent moves by Jeep. Now, besides, it's not like an independent suspension would completely limit the Wrangler's off-road abilities. Just check out the Hummer H1. Uh, It's legendary in off-road for one reason or another, and also has independent suspension all around. In fact, it might be the aftermarket parts companies, not Wrangler enthusiasts or Jeep enthusiasts at all, in fact, who would be most disappointed by such a drastic suspension change. The Wrangler's solid axles and coil link suspension make it the most popular and obviously most capable rig for customization. Well, pretty much the same thing with the Cherokee. Uh, other possibilities that, make, uh, that may be implemented to help the Wrangler's quest for improved fuel economy are improved aerodynamics. Oh, I'm sure that's going to look just swell. And further use of lightweight materials. Personally, I'd like to see Jeep start introducing the use of carbon fiber. Aerodynamic styling and lightweight materials were seen on this year's 2013 Jeep Moab concepts. And also, Jeep is still working on introducing a diesel engine to the model line and potentially using the same power plant that's found in the diesel Grand Cherokees. Now, there are probably still a couple years before we start hearing any concrete details about the 2016 Wrangler. I know that's kind of a little ways away. But at which time, it'll be interesting to see just how stricter fuel economy, and crash safety regulations have been balanced with traditional Wrangler cues, like its removable doors and roof and folding windshield. Now, there were several of you guys who sent that particular story into into the XJ Talk Show. I want to thank you guys all for staying on top of breaking news and sending those stories in. I, like I said earlier in the show, I get uh, stories almost on a weekly basis, stuff that I introduce here. and I don't always uh, give credit where credit's due. Uh, this time, I got so many influxes of emails about this story in particular I can't possibly list them all. So I want to thank everybody who sent that to me and keep up the great work. As always, I appreciate the help, guys. And if you would like to send a story in for This Week in Jeep, uh, just send an email to newstips at xjtalk.com. Yeah, I remember hearing or reading a a story about uh, the government looking into solid axles, front solid axles, because of the death wobble issue. Apparently, it's an inherent issue whenever you have a solid front axle. So uh, I thought to myself, you bastards need to stay away from my four wheel drive. Yes. So yeah, absolutely. I, I will be, I will be interested to see if, uh, if there's anything done from the standpoint of, uh, government inter- intervention, uh, and retrofitting, uh, these, 
uh, IFS Wranglers uh, to uh, the way God intended them to be, solid front axle. We're going to have a, a big, huge campaign start up, SATSA, save the solid axle. <laughs> Well, it'll also be interesting to see if the uh, if the the Jeep engineers are clever, in as much as still making it possible to make use of Dana 30s, Dana 44s to easily swap in to the new Wranglers, because then it would make it a little easier uh, for the uh, the garage person to you know maybe uh, buy some aftermarket. Um, uh, shock towers or, or, or spring uh, purchase and stuff and, and weld that on and, and get a, a solid axle underneath there. You know, I, I, I give it until the end of next year, the end of 2014. And I, I believe that somebody out there is going to spend the money to put some solid axles underneath a 2014 Cherokee. I, I know it's going oh, to yeah. happen yeah, just, somebody just will. because, yeah, somebody's going to do it just because of the, of the name badge uh, and get back to sort of show the world. This is what it, what should have been done. And this is how cool it can be, you know, from their perspective, at least. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, all the all the computer electronics and everything else that, that are, uh, you know, going into that, it's almost a drive-by wire system. I don't know how compatible that kind of a drive system or a suspension system will be uh, on, the, on that vehicle. So we'll see. Um, I'll, I'll make mention. Um, you remember the El Camino, right? Oh, yeah. So an El Camino lifted with large tires on it looks really cool. It sure does. <laughs> so does anything, pretty much. I mean, I saw yes. some pictures of Mustangs. Uh, <laughs> I've seen a smart car, a smart car yes. lifted with, <laughs> yeah. with uh, yeah. you know, big tires underneath of it. It looks cool. So, yeah, and oh, uh, you know. and also too, I've even seen uh, the uh, the first generation Jeep Liberty uh, with solid axles front and rear and a lot of body armor, and uh, it, it still looked like a Volkswagen on steroids, but it, yeah, it, it, it looked it still looked a lot better. It looked like a more uh, off big uh, beefier off-road vehicle but you know i look at it this way <clears throat> if you spend five grand on a suspension system uh replacing axles and everything else it damn well be, <laughs> better be a good off-road vehicle and that's kind yeah. of the point is because it's like when the cherokees came out it was a a very good off-road vehicle from the factory and and i guess that's the disappointing thing no it wasn't an attractive vehicle it still is an attractive vehicle. Uh, it's just something that we've gotten used to because we it, it's very distinctive and it gets us from point A to point B and doesn't matter how many ups and downs and sideways are in between there. And, and there's a love that has, has formed for the, for the vehicle. And when somebody comes in and, and, and tries to tell you that your, your dog, your uh, companion or whatever – is old and no longer any good and we're replacing it with this and on oh and and it's using the same name so we're replacing your good trusted friend with another one with the same name they're basically saying you need to get rid of that for this and i think and i think that's what rubs people the wrong way and i'm really really surprised that they went with the same name i'm really surprised they didn't see that coming uh, well, geez, I'm wondering if, if they did. I mean, I, I would, wouldn't mind really getting a chance to ask the hard question as, you know, why? Why did you do that? You know, why did you pick that name? Uh, when you're getting rid of a model line that very easily could have taken on that name badge, why would you go back and pull up the Cherokee? Uh, just, you know, to my mind, it, it, it's sort of to, to get people talking about it uh, and, and to really generate a buzz you generate buzz, it generates interest, it generates interest, it generates sales. I think that's how they were trying to look at it. And uh, and who knows? It might end up working. I think with all the problems that have been plagued uh, with this with this design and, and this platform, uh, you know, I think the damage is already done. Can they recover from it in the long run? I don't know. Uh, nonetheless, a, a big stigmata is around that name now because of sort of this controversy that they've created. Well, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I know I'm not going to buy one. I'm not going to buy a grand uh, Cherokee either. No offense to the the folks that have grands, but uh, whenever I was uh, in the the Jeep dealership in '98 to buy a TJ, and uh, I saw the XJ, I thought, well, you know, that's a, that's a nice looking vehicle. It's a decent vehicle. It's a Jeep. It's a four wheel drive. Uh, I didn't think it was in the same class as the TJ, but I didn't know anything about Jeeps then. All I knew from Jeeps was uh, Jeeps or Wranglers, and anything else is is not a Jeep uh, in my mind. So. Um, I was uh, very happy that uh, uh, after buying the Cherokee and, and then learning that the 
the four point the legendary 4.0 the legendary aw4 transmission uh and also too i was lucky enough to get the chrysler 8.25 29 spline spline axle the uh uh high pinion uh dana 30 uh, so i was i really just this flat ass lucked out in getting all the the good aspects of the cherokee and uh, again in my opinion i only missed the the best cherokee uh made by one year so yeah. no, i didn't <laughs> yep well uh, but you didn't buy yours new so no no i didn't i've actually this one's uh, had a a one owner vehicle uh, i mean this is a one owner vehicle and uh, all 170,000 miles that i've put on it were put on by me my wife uh, or uh, one of my daughters and uh, my daughters haven't driven it that much well, I got to say that uh, I was actually talking with somebody here recently about uh, about my Cherokee and uh, and the fact that you know I'm I'm only the third owner of it and and I bought it from a college girl uh, who got it from her parents uh, who were the original owners. Oh, that's uh, great. So it's, that yeah, means I mean, that's it, like it, a one I owner. Have, I mean, that's that's be, like a two owner. I had a, I had a full Carfax vehicle history report on it uh, as well uh, going into the deal when I bought it. So I mean, I essentially knew this Cherokee uh, from its inception. Uh, and got to see sort of exactly what had been done through it over the years and, and, and stuff like that. For the most part, I had a very good idea, more so than uh, any of the other Cherokees that I've looked at or that I had looked at at the time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's uh, I definitely have a, a very strong kinship to this Cherokee, uh, even though I've been ignoring it for so long. <laughs> well, that's a spy. Uh, oh, I, you know, I want to ask you this real quick before we uh, wrap yeah. the show up. How did Halloween go? Oh man, yeah, we got to talk about that, don't we? <laughs> now, if, oh, now, if you guys don't talking. remember, or if you didn't catch, if you don't catch the Tony and Josh show, uh, Josh puts together a big Halloween to do for all the kids and uh, big or little uh, that come by his house there in, in Portland. So uh, he always gets excited and spends a lot of time during the week, uh, the week prior to the Halloween getting set up. And uh, I'm just asking how he, how it went. Uh, it was awesome. I made at least a half a dozen children cry. Excellent. Uh, scared, <laughs> scared, uh, <laughs> scared one guy clear, uh, made him fall back and, and, uh, land on his butt on the pavement. Uh, I, <laughs> I had probably a good solid 400 kids come out. I mean, any Ooh, given time through, you know, about six o'clock until about nine o'clock, there was 20, 30 people out in front of the house. Uh, it was, it was great. Uh, everything went off pretty much without a hitch. There was a few things that I wish I could have gotten up in time. Um, it was a sort of a last ditch or last minute sort of setup with some of the things, and uh, and I didn't get a chance to to put up a few things that I wanted to. But nonetheless, the the haunted house that I had set up in the in the driveway was great, uh, and we're scaring the living you know what out of people all night long. It was just awesome. Well, I hope you took some pictures uh, or oh, some I video. Did. And you, yeah, you got to post uh, those up on xjtalk.com for po- pokes, for pokes, for pokes. I like that. For pokes. pokes. Just for, for pokes. <laughs> for pokes to uh, to watch and uh, maybe live vicariously through uh, that experience. Yep. No, I did a video walkthrough, so i share that and some pictures along uh, with you guys. Next year, it'll be even bigger and better. Well, you know what? Uh, I don't know why we don't do that here. Uh, I certainly have the... Uh, the ability and the desire to scare little people because <laughs> I remember doing it when I was uh, in my uh, my mid-teens. Uh, I, got, I don't know. Maybe I should take a little time and do that. I know my wife would really enjoy it. The girls would enjoy it's it, too. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, my uh, my wife is a big uh, Halloween fan, although here in the most, oh, uh, cool. most recent years, we haven't really done anything. Uh, I mean, we always have uh, some food, uh, her uh, uh, relatives come over, her mom, her dad, uh, her sister. Uh, and uh, mm-hmm. interestingly enough, my uh, my niece uh, <laughs> didn't want to go trick-or-treating this year. She's in junior high. And then she got yeah. here, and she's like whining because she wants to go trick-or-treating. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so she came back with a bucket, <laughs> a bucket of candy. And uh, I was trying to take various things from her. I had her holding that thing really close to her the rest of the night. It was great. <laughs> Well, I hope you guys had a great Halloween, too. Uh, check over uh, at xjtalk.com. I'll be posting up some pictures here next week of the whole haunted house, ex- haunted house experience in front of Northwest 99XJ's house. 
So like we said on the uh, the voice uh, voicemail, we'd like to hear from you. We'd like to hear from you from uh, various uh, different ways, but our voicemail line is 530-675-4102. Also remember that we're on YouTube. I just recently put up a, a disc brake repair video you need to go have a look at, make a comment on. Tell me everything I did wrong. So uh, Don't until subscribe. And so until next week, you guys have a, a great week, and we'll see you after SEMA.